In this video, we'll be exploring techniques for taking a guy who is laying down bricks and turning him into a guy who's laying down gold. And we're also going to be taking a look at some new resources for SDXL, for Stable Diffusion Extra Large, and actually trying them out inside of SDXL. Now, just, just a quick note to remind you guys that if you are interested in studying uh, Comfy UI and SDXL, there is now a course that I'm uh, hosting. And this one, we've already had 50 students, about 50. It's getting great feedback. So I would like to see you over there. I'll have a discount for the course in the description. If you want to head on over there, you will get up to six, seven, eight hours of the best, of the very best education on this subject. Check it out. Now, uh, we're going to be talking about control nets and how control nets have come now to SDXL. So when SDXL came out just a little while ago, one of the things it lacked was uh, control nets and we had a bit of a teaser from stability ai where they explained that uh, image control was forthcoming in sdxl and showed some really nice examples here i really like this guy here but that was the only sort of teaser that we got and i wanted to just go a little bit into what is control net and why is it so special so this is the original paper that was produced in February. So control nets have been around since February. And here you can see a control net being used to turn one image into three or four images. And the images are obviously being produced by the prompt, but the image itself is being styled on the original using the control net. And in this case, we're using the canny edge. And you can see the beautiful images that it has created here. Now, canny net a canny edge is the one that we're going to be looking at later on and we're going to be taking well i took this image i've already done it took this beautiful image from adobe stock and uh looks nice cut it into a square and i asked it to be turned into a block of to a set of blocks made from corduroy that was the idea and i think I think Stable Diffusion did it very well. So now we're working with SDXL. We can actually work with fairly large size images. This is the base model. This is the work with the base model. And this was the refiner model. Quite interestingly, I actually felt that the base model produced the, the better image. Uh, this was 25 steps and this was 10 steps. Overall though, you can see the, it tried its best, <laughs> I'll put it that way. This is the original image. You've got three blocks numbered. It's a very, very faint reflection. You have some blocks in the background. It's kind of picked up the faint reflection. And th that's pretty amazing. And it's turned it into almost a full reflection. Unfortunately, it produced a corduroy texture everywhere, <laughs> absolutely everywhere, which is not what I wanted. But it did produce these nice looking blocks. I also asked for lettering or numbering, I can't remember what the exact what the exact prompt was, it did give me the numbers. And even when it invented some of these boxes, some numbers appear. It kind of knew that I wanted numbers to appear there. So it knew the numbers, three, three, five. It got, th things got a little bit weird with the, with reflections. And I think it's probably fair to say it, it, it struggles a little bit with reflections. And sometimes it doesn't matter at all, sometimes it's a bit more impactful. So that's the one with the refiner. Now there are a lot more resources that are available for Stable Diffusion Excel. And the number has mushroomed over just three or four weeks since it came out. And one of the images that we're looking at is this Dream Shaper. One of the images, one of the resources is Dream Shaper. Dream Shaper have Dream Shaper XL 1.0. This is actually the alpha version two. And uh, it's got quite a lot of usability. We've got this beautiful lion. We've got the, the warrior. Uh, we've got a, a dragon. This is all SDXL. And uh, we're seeing more and more. And it, it, it can do this type of thing as well. It can do almost like vector graphics. So I have seen that there, have been, the, the, there are a number of new resources for Comfy UI, not just SDXL, but Comfy UI. There is this one here, which is AIR or AI resource. And with this one, you come in, you copy it. And if you can tell me what it does, <laughs> send me the answer. 
on a postcard. These, these are all just SDXL resources. And obviously Dream Shaper is probably the most popular one. And that makes sense because the Dream Shaper, the Dream Shaper models, the, the checkpoints are excellent quality. I mean, they're really, really good. Uh, and these are the other ones that have just cropped up in the meantime. I mean, considering that it's 1000 by 1000, typically uh, th that's the image uh, size that you're dealing with, with uh, SDXL is pretty amazing that we've got so many resources already just on this website. Now, some of the resources are checkpoints, some of them are LoRa files, some of them are just workflows. Uh, this particular one apparently just does not need anything. You just download it and you can use it inside of Comfy UI. So there's a lot going on. This particular model is called, it's a checkpoint uh, merge and the name for it is Ambiance. And uh, yeah, just look, for, just search for SDXL. You'll find a ton or just Excel. You'll find a ton of these new, uh, th these new checkpoints. This one in particular just caught my eye with the, with the image here. And we're going to be working on trying to recreate this and, and looking at techniques inside of uh, Comfy UI that we can use to actually accelerate the, 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 the use of these resources. So that with some of them, I actually had the, the, the item actually on, on here. And then literally within a few seconds, I've got it inside of Comfy UI, able to work with it. You can do that with automatic 1111. You can do that now with some of these images and some of these workflows. So there's a whole way, new way of uh, transferring the workflows from Comfy, uh, from uh, Civita, Civit, AI, Civit AI into Comfy, Comfy UI, Civit AI, Comfy UI. So this is one of the images that really caught my eye. It is from the Ambiance SDXL. And whilst in the past, it, the easiest thing to do was to uh, get this stuff into uh, automatic 1111 and to recreate the images. Obviously with the new situation with SDXL working much, much better inside of Comfy UI. We also want a way of copying stuff into Comfy UI, copying workflows into Comfy UI. So what I did was that I noticed there was a button here uh, for workflows. So what does that do? Just click on it copied. And I didn't think this was going to work, but I just literally pasted it into a JSON file and uh, tried to see what would happen. And uh, I'll show you a bit later what happened. But before we go there, uh, this is the work that I did with the uncanny, uh, uncanny, with the canny um, control net. So this is something now inside of Inside of Comfy UI SDXL, using the SDXL, the standard S SDXL base um, checkpoint. And uh, also we went, we, we started off with this Adobe stock photo. Uh, I cut it down to 1024, about 1024 by 1024. We got the canny from that. And then we got the, 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 we got the render, the first render, this is the base render. And the base render is really, it's really closely following the, 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 the image that we created. So a lot of the skills in creating, creating this image here, but, um, what we found, what, what I found the, the control net is going to guide the render. So it, it's there at every stage and it managed to do a pretty good job in following the prompt and the prompt on this one is realistic portrait, woman sitting on ground with a laptop, cropped denim trousers, hands pointing to the side, grinning, studio lighting, shadows and highlights, high quality photography, award-winning photography, mm. intense details, latte skin. Thanks to uh, Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson came up with that expression, latte skin. I don't know. A brunette, uh, realistic colors, hiking boots. And the, the, these are the results. I mean, the, the denim trousers, I, I think I wanted some denim trousers and it, it kind of like got a little bit of denim right at the bottom there, but it, it gave her a denim jacket, which um, overall it very closely matches not only the, the, the canny preview, but also the original. And uh, then we added, of course, because this is SDXL, we added the refiner. And this is where things became interesting because some parts of the image definitely improved, especially the face. That is a much more 
radiant face uh, than the than the original. But I found that it did struggle with that, with the arms. And at this stage, we no longer have the support of the control net. So we're finding that the arms are kind of struggling. It, it's struggling. I think it's trying to create a new arm, maybe reaching out to the computer. You can see there the shading in the original one. It's got the pocket there. It's got the pocket like in the image. It's got the pocket on the left uh, or, or the right, whichever way you're looking at it. But the arm, there seems to be a new arm which is going to try to do something on the on the laptop and it's becoming an Apple laptop. Some parts of the image, definitely the face improved. The fingers and the arms just became a bit more confused with the uh, refiner. And I think really what was happening there was that the refiner was... It, I don't think it was being guided by the control net. So this guy is guided by the control net. We've got the image looking about as good as we can possibly. It's figured out that this is going to be a rectangular object here. It's using the control net all the time whilst it's rendering. And it's figured out the broad composition. So it's done a great grand job. And then the refiner just got a little bit lost. It, it, it lost its way somewhere somewhere towards the end. But this was the workflow here for the blocks. And uh, it starts off here, gets a rough canny net. And I was hoping it would do a little bit of something with reflections, which it did do, but it wasn't quite as successful as I wished. It did sort of get that, <laughs> that there were reflections, but uh, the odd one, the, the number two, it, it struggled with that one. It struggled with this guy here with the uh, reflection, it struggled with the corduroy, just didn't quite get, do not put the corduroy in the background. We don't want corduroy everywhere. Uh, I felt corduroy was, was a really nice texture. And what was interesting was that the texture, you can see the texture, it has any option of how to, how thick to make the texture, but it, it, it decided to follow the exact direction of the wood grain. So if you take a look, oops, if you take a look at the original image, there is a kind of a wood grain and it's actually following the exact wood grain in the way that it uh, applies the texture. It follows it it's up, down, it's uh, horizontal. It does this weird thing where it really knows exactly what's going on inside of the image. Um, I think the, the lettering obviously is still a bit of a struggle. It doesn't understand uh, letters and numbers perfectly, so it doesn't know how to... how to re It renders them well. One, three, five, we've got that there. There's a nine and it actually tries to reverse the nine, but sort of fails a little bit. With the one, it, <laughs> it tried its best. I don't know if we can find the gold one. Let's see if we can find the gold one. So with our gold worker, he's a bricklayer. Then he becomes this gold worker and he does a pretty decent job in, in transforming himself into this uh, Midas character here. Now the overall uh, prompt was a builder wearing a yellow hard hat and goggles laying down bars of solid gold, goatee beard, headphones around neck, red t-shirt, fingers around a gold bar. And uh, I wanted to just give it all that it needed to understand what was happening in the picture with the words as well as with the with the control net. Uh, the, there is these kinds of things around his neck and I didn't want it to do anything weird with that. So it didn't produce headphones, but it did produce a really nice looking t-shirt, uh, which was in the prompt, the red t-shirt, and it produced, everything was nice. Obviously there's a part of the image where it's kind of a uh, little bit blurred out and it didn't know what to do there. So it produced the, the best option that it could. It looks fine. I think his fingers are a little bit, a uh, little bit grim, especially with the refined version, but overall, his beard looks fine. Uh, it's actually better than in the original. He's got a little bit more, a little bit more manly, and he's also very, a little bit more. Um, his beard is a little bit fuller with the with the refined one. So I liked it. We were using the same prompt all the way through. I really like the fact that it figured out it had to sort of blur things out towards this end. There's not a lot of, yeah, there's not a lot of detail telling it. Hey, everything's blurred out. There's a whole lot of bokeh. I did not put bokeh or bokeh anywhere or blurry in the description. And it actually created quite a lot of stuff. All this gold, all these gold bars here, very coherent. It There's nothing there. There's absolutely nothing in the background. It just created those. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a really wonderful uh, example of how this thing can really nail things. And uh, just a little bit of our pointing woman uh, with the fingers 
And initially, the initial attempt that I did was really good. It actually got the fingers and the positioning pretty accurate. I mean, you can't tell exactly what's going on with the fingers here, but I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's quite extraordinary how good it is in terms of interpreting the original one. The trousers were a little bit dodgy. It, it wasn't quite sure what was trouser. I mean, it's there in the, it's there in the colors, but <laughs> it got a little bit lost. Um, and uh, with the refiner model, it actually produced, I felt the hair with the refiner one was actually quite almost as good as the original hair, but the control, the, the one guided by the control, the hair is exactly the same. You can tell that the hair is almost exactly the same as it is in the, in the original photograph. So I was very impressed by this. So obviously with SDXL, we're working with larger, larger size images, 1024 by 1024. Let's take a bit, a bit of extra time, but um, really impressive control, really impressive control. I think a lot is going to depend on the prompting, uh, the, the final results you're going to get. Uh, this was the, that image, uh, this is the uh, file that I got from Civit, Civit AI, uh, or Civit AI, and you can see the workflow is pretty dense and pretty involved, but I got this literally up within a few seconds from copying it from Civit AI. And uh, the, the results were, what I do nowadays, I try to check to see what's happening with the checkpoints. So you can see with this checkpoint here, we've got a really, really nice image. Um, it's got a lot of contrast. It's beautiful and the, the gold detail is fantastic. I do know that it's, I, when I copied that, I noticed that it's using a specific checkpoint and also a specific VAE. So when I actually tried to use it, I didn't have the checkpoint. So what I wanted to do was to check whether the image that it created using the standard um, standard or the Dream Shaper. So I've got uh, the Dream Shaper XL. Um, I've also got the SD Excel. I wanted to see whether there was enough differentiation to justify downloading this new model. Obviously these models, uh, models are like a six, seven gigabytes large, and I don't want to have too many of them on my PC. Just using the one that I've got Dream Shaper, uh, and uh, also the, the, the base from a stability AI. This was the best image I got and it's, it doesn't compare. I mean, look at the, the quality of this guy here. It is so much better in terms of the detail, the crispness, the, the contrast, and it's good. It's a very dynamic, very interesting image, but it just doesn't compare with the new, uh, with, with the new checkpoint. So for this one, I would want to download the checkpoint and have that in my armory along with the VAE. So this one, what I'm doing as I'm seeing the new checkpoints as they progress towards the first release. I think this one is still in alpha. It's a one. I think that's alpha one. So it's still in alpha, but even here, I think it is fantastic. I think this is kind of the one that I want to hit the download button on. Um, so I'm doing this kind of testing to see if it's worth, uh, at this stage, downloading the file and using it as part of my armory for SDXL. Obviously there's a huge amount of options out there and I want to have a good collection of really nice, uh, really nice uh, checkpoints, but it's also nice to have these workflows and uh, being able to get these workflows working easily out of Civit AI is fantastic. Now I did have one or two where there were missing modules and it was possible to see exactly which modules were missing using the, the, the manager. So that was fantastic. And I think it's really nice to see so much new material coming through for SDXL and also for Comfy UI. Now, if you want to learn more about Comfy UI, there is uh, the beginner's guide on the Pixavert channel. I will link to that in the description. And also you've got the, uh, the, the course over at Udemy, which obviously if you want a few more hours of training, that one is also available. So uh, check the links in the description. See you in the next video, guys.